I, I wasn't the outstanding student, yeah. so, <laughs> but I was so in his class. <laughs> I, I can't, I can't claim the honor of having nominated all of for this award, this homecoming. Although, of course, I am very happy indeed that he is achieving it and, and has received it. Uh, and I thank whoever made the nomination. Which I don't even know. <laughs> Whoever that was, very sincerely and very happily for having made this this man the recipient of, of that award. My daughter was in town the other day. She is a cobber too, and we got into talking about uh, how it was to teach, and she teaches part-time at Minot State University. And I happened to remark to her that my teaching at Concordia and my contact with students was from beginning to end the most outrageously pleasant and productive association that any person could possibly hope for. And I thought to myself, I have been extraordinarily blessed by being allowed to work in that kind of place with that kind of people. Well, all of here is a prime example of what I'm saying. Nobody was more diligent, nobody was more intelligent, nobody was more interested. Nobody was more fervent, and nobody took to it better than he did. And I have never forgotten that. So, among the joys that I have had as a professor, I must rank Olaf as one of the best. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, I want to. I have one more question to ask of, of the honorees here, but but I feel like saying now, you know, as someone who is a professor for three years, I kind of know how it feels, um, my my colleagues here, to be that honored by students that you have known and who have, who have really um, even maybe exceeded the expectations that you had for them. What an honor it is to feel that you were part of the process of their maturation and development. So I want you all to know how much it means to your professors that, that you are here and we're honoring you and that they chose this Mike and I now have been here five years, and of course we started trying to figure out what Concordia was all about. I knew that I was in a part of the country that I, that, you know, it's not even on the weather map. <laughs> when you turn on the television, I was just in Atlanta. There is no North Dakota. I mean, it's not even on the map. Cold weather hasn't come yet. No, I just had no clue, um, but we, we had so little clue of the richness of this community that we have just by luck um, become part of. And this evening is one of the events that we cherish the most, especially since we moved it to the house from uh, a hotel in town. We've had more opportunity than to hear the stories of people that we honor here uh, and to know where about them. This, however, is the first year. And, and so therefore, we just feel incredibly great to be here and to be part of this place. This was the first year, though, that the um, alumni office, or the development office, sought to send me the packet of nomination material for each of you. And I had no idea that, that you've, been, you've all, many of you, not all of you, but many of you have been in the hopper for a long time. And here I was reading all of these nominations, and I thought, oh my goodness, what richness there is uh, among our alumni. 
and how privileged I think you should feel and we feel um, that we're honoring you this this uh, homecoming. Uh, I think you you are just clearly one of the most illustrious classes uh, of honorees we've had among many illustrious classes. So it's a great, great privilege to host you here at our home. I wanted to finish by asking each of the honorees to tell us a, a immediately memorable um, experience that you had here at Concordia. It doesn't have to be profound. But it has to be what are those one of those things that you, you just grab onto when you're thinking about your time here. Should Muriel and I would like to say something about oh, David too? I'm sorry, they I'm, they I'm, think I'm, about that. They I'm, think I'm about that. Oh, good. I'm just, just sort of cross Marilyn off since she couldn't have possibly taught. No, no, wait a minute. That was the other Marilyn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please, please. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. It's a real privilege for me to uh, be here and be invited by Dave and Benita. Uh, as Dave mentioned, uh, I was a member of Hope Lutheran Church, still I'm a member of Hope Lutheran Church, uh, while Dave served as our senior pastor. And uh, recently I read a book uh, by Colin Powell, Colin Powell, that talks about leadership. And it has three facets of leadership that I think are just were meant for Dave as I, as I read them. The first one, it talks about vision. And Tim C.B. talked a little bit earlier about Dave's vision. And as he looked around it and the need for churches and the fact that we had two churches, one on the north side of town and one on the south side of town, and that was his vision. And as he talked about that, it made everybody in our congregation so excited and to think that we were on a mission to do something different, something that had never been done before and something that would certainly touch the lives of so many people. And so his vision was always there. Another part of his vision that is less profound but <laughs> equally memorable was the fact that we have in the front of Pope Lutheran Church on the north side some uh, kind of it's kind of a wood wooded wooden area. And Dave, when I was on the council, Dave and I were looking at ways to kind of make that a little more pleasant. And we found <laughs> some very lovely screen uh, prints. And when we brought them back, I remember that the members that had gone down to see these prints, we all really liked these. Well, when we put them up, the first thing that the congregation said was, oh, goodness, it's tie-dye. <laughs> 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 and it was quite a uh, thing at the beginning, but it's just become beautiful, and everybody looks at it, and now it looks like kind of like a, a stained glass window, and we don't know what the sun is rising or setting. But <laughs> that was <laughs> something that we thought about often. So vision was one area. The second area that Colin Paul talks about in his book is the area of enforcers. He says that every leadership team needs an enforcer. Dave could also be an enforcer uh, when we would talk about the budget. And he was very careful all the time with the whole Lutheran Church budget. And so um, I always remember that because it was so easy sometimes to say, well, we can get this from the congregation. Our congregation was very giving and very supportive. But Dave always wanted to be very, very careful of that because he felt that we were entrusted uh, with these resources of our congregation, and he did that in such a nice way. And so that was always a real pleasure. We always ended up in the black. <laughs> Maybe not very much, <laughs> but we always ended up in the black, and that was just a really a nice, it was a wonderful lesson for everyone in the congregation, the young people, as well as the people on the council, and, and the older people as well, to know that their senior pastor cared about the resources and was a good steward of them that. The third one was the chaplain. And Colin Paul always says that you need to have a chaplain. So you need to have a visionary, you need to have an enforcer, and you need to have a chaplain. And tonight, uh, Tim and I were talking uh, with Dave and Benita and Karen and talking about the number of sermons that we remember. <laughs> and we really have, have had a good time talking about that. Some of them were funny, the time that Dave came with a patch on his head <laughs> after get, being hit by a ball at uh, the Twin Stadium. Oh. <laughs> so, there were some that were memorable, but, that, but so many times, and one of the reasons that we joined Hope was that we would come to church in the morning, and we would go home, and we would believe that Dave had spoken directly to us. And as we would be driving home in the car, I'd say to Bill, did he know that that's what happened to me this week? And he said, no, he was talking to me. <laughs> that's what happened to me. 
And as you talked with other members of our congregation, they all thought he was talking specifically to them as well. And so that was just a wonderful, wonderful experience. Dave also shows just a tremendous amount of compassion for the members of our congregation. And I'll never forget that uh, when my mother died, um, I looked out into the congregation in Bismarck, and there was Dave. And he had come all the way to Bismarck to be a part of that day uh, with our family. And I'll never forget that. And I appreciated that so much. Another thing that I learned from Dave um, is how to shine light on problems. And I remember, um, you know, we were one of the first churches in this area to look at contemporary worship and traditional worship. And that was um, quite an <laughs> event a number of years ago. It doesn't seem like quite an event now. But it was a real event um, at that time. And, and there were a lot of people that were questioning and brought very good questions. Um, sometimes it was fearful. Sometimes it was very good questioning. And Dave always said that the way that we can go through these kinds of things is to shine light. And I've always remembered that and thought that that was such a wonderful way in which you can deal with issues and problems. And, and that, that has influenced me tremendously. Last of all, Dave mentioned joy. And we had a wonderful time together. And I may not have been his teacher, but I got to give him one time a test. <laughs> and I must tell you about that. <laughs> this was when he served Hope 25 years. And Dave didn't want to have any kind of special event for that. But some of us who had been um, uh, on the church council, we decided that we couldn't kind of let this event pass. So there were three of us past presidents, and we went to the current president of the council. We said, we'd like to do something special for Dave one night to kind of celebrate his 25th anniversary. And the president then said, yes, that was fine. And so we asked Paul Dovery who, if he would come and help us with this. And so that night at the, at the church council, they were going to begin the council, and we were all outside. And, uh, the president of our council at that time said, well, he said, you know, he said, I'm not sure what's up, but he said, Paul Dovery is coming tonight. And he said he wants to talk about something really important. And we were standing out there. We just would have loved to see Dave's face. <laughs> Dave liked to know what was going to happen. <laughs> and to be uncomfortable was something that he would, would not have wanted to know. He always kind of wanted to know what was going to happen. So at the end of the meeting, then, Paul Dovery came in. And he said, well, you know, he said, we've um, found something out. He said, we've been looking through some of the old records at Concordia. And we found that Dave Johnson never graduated. <laughs> so therefore, his ordination, his whole ministry, <laughs> 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 but he said, you know, he said, um, we've kind of figured something out. He said, we're going to have a, a test. He said, if Dave can pass these three questions, then he said, you know, we'll kind of think that's okay. So um, I worked with the three past presidents each to identify a question. And the first one came in and he said, well, you know, he said, this is a church. He said, you've been in seminary. He said, you've been preaching a long time. He said, so, he said, I have a question to ask you about religion. And I don't remember what the question was, but it was some obscure thing, you know, probably something like, how many does are there in the Bible? <laughs> and Dave had no idea <laughs> what it was. So he said, well, okay, you know, that's, that's okay. You know, and that was kind of a tough question. <laughs> the second question then came from uh, an accountant. And he said, um, well, Dave, you know, this is a big church. We've got church on the north side, church on the south side. Boy, this is a big deal. He said, you must know something about business. And so he asked him a very obscure question about accounting. And again, Dave didn't have any idea of what that was. So, you know, we kind of all shook our heads again. <laughs> so he said, well, we'll try one more time. And this was the question that I had. I said, well, Dave, you know, we've really focused a lot on youth at home. And that's been important to us. And so we would like to, you know, kind of think about that a little bit. And I said, last Sunday, I said, you talked about Cinderella. And in your sermon, you talked about Cinderella. Now tell me, Dave, what are the two stepsisters' names? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, he failed that one. <laughs> so we went out into the hallway and had to kind of consider this. And we had a big poster. We said, well, Dave, we decided to give you a diploma from Concordia. 
and had a picture of Dave when he was here in his football uniform. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and instead of having the seal of the college, we had the seal of Ron Donovan. <laughs> you were a Madonna? Oh, 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 I wasn't always going to be a bad <laughs> <laughs> Your life and hope has been one of, of great joy. Uh, it's been one of wonderful uh, ministry and growth in terms of the spiritual journey that each of us at Hope has been on. It's been a wonderful family. Uh, experience for us as we, we raised our children at Hope and we got to know the families at Hope. Uh, Seagley's son is the same age as our son. Jeremy.